Hi, today we have Fraser Atkinson, CEO of Green Power Motor, trading on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol GP. Fraser, great to have you with us. Great to be here. Fraser, Green Power Motor is advancing the adoption of electric vehicles by making all electric buses and trucks that are affordable, durable, and easy to deploy. Let's start with a brief overview of your business. So Green Power designs, manufactures, and distributes uh, a suite of products in the medium and heavy duty all electric space. So we're not in the commercial space, we're in the medium and heavy duty. And an illustration of that is that we've designed our own cabin chassis that we build a, a number of products on, uh, both on the passenger side and the cargo commercial side. And we also sell it to other third parties, including other uh, OEM EVs. Now, considering the rapidly evolving EV landscape, can you shed light on the current and future addressable market for Green Power's product? So we've, uh, we've focused into two core areas, the school bus market, which is really being one of the few areas that has uh, substantial tailwinds, not headwinds, in, in, as an EV company and has huge support, a lot of advocacy and money and mandates. So we're focused on that area. And the other area we're focused on is in commercial vehicles. In terms of the competitive landscape, uh, over the past year or two, many of our competitors have either gone by the wayside or uh, been acquired or consolidated with other operations and changed their, their businesses such that, you know, we're, we're really, uh, now faced with a, a less of a sales and more of a production uh, focus for our company. Fraser, for the nine months ended December 31st, 2023, Green Power reported record revenue. You showed an impressive 40% increase over the previous year period. What is driving the remarkable growth? Well, I'd also add that within that, uh, both that year and the previous year, we also generated a gross profit which very few, if any, of our EV competitors are doing on a consistent basis. Some are doing it once a quarter, but not consistently. What's helping us or driving us is that where we're focused. We're not trying to do all business for all people. Within the school bus and the commercial vehicles, we're being very strategic. And what I mean by that is states like New York came out with a mandate a year ago where they said, with less than 10 years from now, we want all of our school buses to be battery electric or zero emission. And so that means that starting in the next year or two, the uh, school districts and operators in New York have to buy battery electric vehicles. And there's 50,000 in the state out of 480,000 in the nation. Then you go on the other coast, the West Coast, and in California, they followed uh, in this past couple months setting this a similar mandate for the state of California and they've all they're also bringing to the table hundreds of millions of dollars a year to help electrify and more recently these the federal government has had their school bus program and uh, they just did their latest uh, award in January and we've applied to their next round and expect to continue to enjoy uh, you know, the benefits of the federal government supporting electrification with money for that. Fraser, with the school bus division being a key growth driver, could you discuss how you envision green power transforming school transportation? First, it starts with our products, which are truly a, a modern representation of what a school bus ought to be. You know, in terms of the, our builds, uh, we use an aluminum lightweight frame, uh, super strong, super light, gives the ability, the vehicle is, is that much easier to operate. And we have both the type A smaller school bus and the type D larger school bus, which really addresses substantially all of the needs of any particular school district. So we have the products and we focused on the areas where the greatest needs. We are the states that are looking at uh, you know electrifying now. We're not trying to to sell you know a, a particular state that's a naysayer. 
we're quite happy to uh, deal with them at a later date in that we have more than enough business with some core states that are really keen to electrify because they've set mandates to do so. Now, behind every successful company is a dynamic leadership team, Fraser. Can you talk about the strengths and experiences of Green Power's management team and how they have been pivotal in helping the company achieve its goals? Well, I will apologize to our team in advance for those that I don't name, uh, but we have uh, Brendan Riley as our president. Uh, he was, in, as I understand it, employee number one for BYD in North America. So he has a greater experience in the EV space than even I do, having been in this space for over a decade. We have uh, Michael Seifert, our CFO, comes from a, a background in the logistics and shipping area, so really understands a lot of the, the issues that we have to deal with uh, in terms of production flow. Uh, we have uh, our, our production manager. Uh, he built thousands and thousands of school buses for Bluebird down in Georgia. And also between that point in time to now, had some experience with other EV companies. So has incredible uh, subject matter expertise. We have great people in our supply chain, in our commercial vehicle sales group, and our sales, our school bus sales group. So it's, you know, we do really are blessed with a great team here. Now, Fraser, what is the essential value proposition of Green Power? Why should investors take an interest in green power right now? Well, it's it's our products that we brought to market. So we're not reliant on somebody else that's going to deliver a product that may or may not satisfy you know, what we intended to build. All of our products were built from day one to be battery electric. Number two, we we have, as you were asking earlier, we have a great team. And that's essential in terms of a sector that, that changes almost you know, every, not just every quarter, but every month and sometimes every week. So we have to be able to adapt and you need a team that is quite willing to do so. And I'd say the third thing is, is that our, you know, for example, our focus in the school bus area is in an area where we're delivering products that have a significant health benefit. You know, we didn't talk about this earlier, but the school bus area, we're replacing diesel emitting school buses and the research shows that the NOx emissions from those have as high as 15 times greater probability or possibility of getting lung cancer and respiratory illnesses. So, I mean, we feel really good every time we deliver a school bus. That's a great way to end this interview, Fraser. A really inspiring thought, replacing diesel with electric for kids. I love it. Thank you for sharing your great story with us today. And once again, thanks for having us.